Hunter Biden likes to get away. Flying around with VP Daddy on his airplane when Joe Biden was the vice president, what was Hunter doing? Going to all of those different countries with his father. Very, very curious. We know he's the smartest man Joe knows. Maybe he was giving him advice over there. But this is a new report from the Congress. James Comer and Byron Donalds are sending a letter over to Catherine Shogan at the National Archives. And they're investigating 15 countries that apparently these two hopped on an airplane and jet set to. Also know that the Department of Justice contacted IRS whistleblower Gary Shapley, who was following this trail. He was following the transactions and watching the Biden crime family, in, in particular Hunter, be the bag man for daddy. And when Shapley went up to testify, the DOJ tried to contact him and theoretically tried to dissuade him. We'll take a look at that story. Byron Donald says, hang tight, everybody. We're going to get to the bottom of it. And he was one of the authors of this letter. And so let's take a look at what the Oversight Committee is sending over to the National Archives. Archives. And we're very familiar with the National Archives here. That's Deborah Steidel Wall, which was the former archivist of the United States. Now we have the Honorable Colleen Shogan. And Steidel Wall was the one that was in place when Trump was in office and the one really who was at issue in the Florida Classified Documents case. So this letter is going over to NARA, the head librarian of the entire country, signed off on by James Comer and Byron Donalds, both members of Congress, both on the Oversight Committee. They say, all right, National archives. And this is the same National Archives that evidently has got 5,400 emails that are heavily redacted that involve Joe Biden's pseudonym, Robert L. Peters and Robin Ware and the others. So Congress now says, okay, dear Shogun, Committee on Oversight and Accountability is investigating President Biden's meetings and communications with certain family members and their business associates when he was the vice president. Congress is concerned about then VP Biden's role in his family's foreign business ventures and that he may have used his office to enrich his family, of course. For example, recent reporting indicates that Hunter traveled to at least 15 countries with VP Biden. That's a report over on Fox News from Jessica Chasmar and Cameron Cawthorn. Traveled to at least 15 countries with VP Dad. Messages saying, I can catch a ride with him. The committee also learned that then Vice President Biden met with at least one of Hunter's business associates while in Beijing while visiting on official business. So there's yet a another key piece of evidence. That's a piece from the transcript from Devin Archer. The National Archives, as the country's head librarian, is the custodian agency of all the vice presidential records, and the committee now seeks information about the use of Air Force Two by Vice President Biden and his family. So that's what they want, the flight records. The committee seeks unrestricted special access to Presidential Records Act to certain records related to then-VP Biden's foreign travel with his family on Air Force Two and Marine Two. Then NVP Biden's misuse of Air Force Two and Marine Two is indicative of yet another way that the president has abused his various offices and wasted taxpayer money for the benefit of his fam, which consisted of nothing more than access to Joe Biden himself. Congress says Evan Archer, a longtime Biden family associate, has stated it is, quote, categorically false that Joe Biden played no role in his son's foreign business dealing. That was during the Tucker Carlson interview. Flights on Air Force Two around the world to seal business deals are evidence of that role. So the committee seeks additional information about the Biden family's use of Air Force Two and Marine Two. Please provide the following documents to us no later than September 13th. Here's what we want. All documents and communications from the executive office of the president, including but not limited to the office of the VP, regarding certain Biden family members or associates like Hunter, Eric Sherwin, Devin Archer, or Jeffrey Cooper related to flights on Air Force Two, Marine Two from January 2009 to January 2017. All Air Force and Marine manifests from the same time period involving the same names. Anybody, any flight manifest with these names on them. And all documents or communications related to any security incidents on those same aircraft. Congress says, special access to these presidential records may be granted to Congress for matters within their jurisdiction to any committee if the records are needed for the conduct of its business. Furthermore, it says that the PRA subjects the Vice Presidential Records Act to the same provision. Congress says, the committee's need for these records is well documented. We got to craft legislative solutions solutions, identify legal framework, protect the interests of vice presidents and their families, national security interests, high profile public figures, and so on. If you need additional information about the committee's legislative purpose containing to this investigation, we direct you to the three bank records memoranda that we released this year. And so Congress is referring them to these memos. We did read one of these memos. Actually, we've gone through a couple of these, I think, just showing all of the transactions. Remember the $83,000 here, $83,000 there, blah, blah, blah. The Committee on Oversight and 
accountability has jurisdiction over the National Archives, and so we can investigate you, which is exactly what we're doing. To schedule the delivery of the documents, please give us a phone call and let us know when it's going to happen. Sincerely, your friend, Comer and Byron Donald, two members of Congress who have been digging into this for quite some time. So what were the flights about? What was Hunter doing? Who else was on there? You know, they uh, they corroborate and, and match with official business. Was Joe Biden doing things officially for the United States that Hunter was getting paid for on all 15 of those trips? Who knows? But we do know that when Gary Shapley, the IRS whistleblower, started talking about all of this, the Department of Justice flipped out. So the IRS was following the money. And when Shapley was about to testify in Congress, the DOJ reached out. Here's what they say. Attorneys for senior IRS investigator Gary Shapley revealed a top justice official approached them in April saying he wanted to investigate Shapley's claims. This person, Associate Deputy Attorney General Bradley Weisenheimer, immediately met with Hunter's lawyer and his Delaware prosecutor, who they say later struck a sweetheart deal, while Shapley and his team were pulled off the case. The lawyer said Weisenheimer appeared first to be eager to get to the bottom of Shapley's allegation. What's going on here? He says, but in just two short weeks, Weinsheimer went from expressing an interest in the claims of wrongdoing by the IRS whistleblowers to dismissing the claims of retaliation when the IRS agents were pulled off the case, right? So he comes on, hey, what's going on here? I'm just looking into all of this and then says that there's nothing that went wrong. The DOJ investigates themselves and finds we did nothing wrong. Lytle says, one of the lawyers said that after getting information from him, Weinsheimer reportedly had a secret meeting the next day with Weiss and Hunter's lead lawyer, Chris Clark. Gross, disgusting. So the DOJ lawyers go and meet with the whistleblower and then take everything that they got from the whistleblowers and just did deliver it right back over to David Weiss and Hunter's lawyers. And we learned recently that David Weiss worked with Hunter's brother, Bo, which is probably why the Biden DOJ kept him on and kept calling him a Trump appointed lawyer. Then changed his tune with Lytle, telling him everything is going to be handled by Weiss. So Lytle says, I don't even want to be involved anymore. I'm sorry, Weinsheimer. The string of events left Shapley's team feeling DOJ leaders were going behind their backs with sensitive information because they were. In April, the Wall Street Journal broke the news that senior IRS agent Gary Shapley was planning to come forward. Emails obtained by the Daily Mail and interviews with Shapley's legal team reveal how the DOJ leaders first appeared concerned and eager to investigate the allegations, but then quickly dropped their inquiry. Instead, Shapley and his team were removed and then they got a sweetheart deal. They said, uh oh, we got to bury these guys. An April 24th email obtained by the Daily Mail shows an aide for Deputy Attorney General Lisa Monaco, who's probably really running things there, contacted Lytle asking for a call. Lytle says he spoke the next day with Weinsheimer, giving him a general brief of the allegations about the suppression, but he couldn't go into detail. Lytle said Weinsheimer seemed concerned and keen to investigate. He says, I promise I'm going to get Shapley's team legal permission to share the details. But the next day, Weinsheimer went straight to Hunter's lawyer and Chris and told him everything. According to the emails leaked to Politico, Weinsheimer had a meeting with Clark and Weiss on April 26, during which Clark asked for the department to reconsider imminent charges against Hunter. Here's the email from Brad Weinsheimer, Associate Deputy Attorney General. Hey, Mark, whistleblower team. Hope you're doing well. Hoping you might have time for a brief call concerning one of your clients tomorrow. Please let me know if it might work for you. So then that call comes in and he then turns around and gives everything to Hunter. The same people that the whistleblowers were whistleblowing about. Whole thing's a total scam. They're all in on it. They're all covering up for Hunter. And it's just corruption through and through. Everybody's in on it. It's disgusting. But Byron Donald says, have no fear. We're going to get to the bottom of it. And this representative, the same guy who sent a letter over to Merrick Garland and to the National Archives, rather, is responding. Surprise, surprise, Joe Biden was violating federal law. So, oh, he did not use his official government email? Right. Like, I'm shocked. The reality is, is that Joe Biden has known all along what his son and his brother were doing because he's been in on it. And when you have emails with aliases, fake names, the purpose is to give yourself plausible deniability. That is what Joe Biden was trying to do. The National Archive needs to release those emails. And I also find it funny that whoever the bureaucrat at the National Archives, they thought that this was the espionage crime of the century, that Donald Trump had, had classified documents at Mar-a-Lago. But now we find out that Joe Biden had them as vice president. And then we also find out now he had these emails with fake names. And the National Archives is just now letting people know about this. This is the bureaucratic joke that is happening in Washington, D.C. Those emails need to be released and we're going to get to the bottom of that as well. All right. So Iron is on the case. And for some reason, you know, it's still not enough. You've got all of the emails, the pseudonyms. You've got the text messages. You've got an entire laptop. You've got Marco Polo and their crew who've done 600 plus pages chronicling 400 plus violations. The list goes on and on and on. But for many people in the media, many people on the left, you know, even these airplane 
flights, 15 countries. They were probably just sightseeing and honestly talking about the weather. I'm sure of it. So we're going to continue to cover it, my friends. Thank you for subscribing and joining us as we do.